Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a project update video for this 1-6 scale XM706 V100 armored car. Since the last video update, the vehicle's remaining top deck hatches have been completed and fitted to the model. We'll be going over all this information as well as going over the modifications that are required to be made to the model in order for these new fittings to be added in place. So stay tuned because there's going to be a bit of info coming right at you. So to start this video off, here we have the remaining hatch details that are going to be added to the top portion of this vehicle at this time. The components that we have here are going to be new additions to the EC8 catalog. These are pre-production versions and judging how well they go on the model at this time will then dictate on any changes that may or may not need to be made to them. However, what you see is basically what the final outcomes are going to be with the exception of a few parts that are currently not on the table, and those are still in print. So, starting with the bow hatches, which are right over here, these are the late production V100 bow hatches. The V100 had two patterns of bow hatches throughout its development. The first pattern were basically the exact same geometry as these ones here, however, they did not have these blisters in place and were just a simple plate of steel. These units were produced and entered into the field. However, one of the, or I should say some of the feedback that came back to the engineers from the troops was that the hatches leave some room to be desired because of the propensity of the headroom, or I should say lack thereof. With the driver is all buttoned up on the inside, he has a CVC helmet. This adds a little bit to the space and with the hatches are fully closed, this create a bit of a problem for the crew on the inside. So the engineers at Cadillac Gage went ahead and redesigned the hatches in the following format where they added this blister section to the middle section. If we look on the inside here you can see what they did. They basically just cut out the middle portion of the hatch and they added this little tent type portion that was welded in place and once fitted it now gives the ample amount of headroom required for the individuals on the inside. For the ECA component, obviously I went with the second generation versions and they are fully detailed. They have all the details would be a, which would be present on the actual counterpart and fortunately I was fortunate enough to see a real V100 which is where all of the details that went into the components on the table actually came from. So on the hatches themselves, you can see that they have all of their details which would include the hinge detailing, the strip detailing, the strip is welded in little segments as it is on the real one. We also have a little handle, which again, all of the components that are welded on the real one have their well be detailing present on the printing. And by the way, all these components here are indeed 3D printed. The middle section here has all of its elaborate geometry to it. And if you look at it, it's not just a blister. It actually has some unique shapes to it where the front portion over here is actually nice and smooth. And it's basically just one piece of steel plate that's in this configuration and bent downward and then welded in this area and then the remaining sections are just angular plates that are just welded in order to form the shape because that you do have a bit of an overhang found on certain locations and all the weld beads that are present are again found on the printing on the inner portion over here we have the inner weld detail bead detailing present and we also have here the main gutter section we have the lock mechanisms. The locks are functional and they're basically the same design that are found on the other hatches that are already present on the vehicle, but you'll see that momentarily once everything is fully installed. The hatches are a left and right hand specific set. The only difference is with the one here on the passenger side has a strip found on the outside, while it is an inverse on the one on the driver's hand side. Again, this was lifted directly off the real example. Currently, the only thing that is absent that is going to be supplied with the set is a rubber headrest, which goes into these sections over here. This is something I am going to circle back on as the build progresses, but rest assured the headrest will be supplied with these sets. In addition to the bow hatches, uh, now I'm, there's also a bunch of stuff on here which will go back momentarily, but now moving backward takes us to the rear top deck hatch and on some V100s there's actually a provision for an MG. On this one here I'm on the fence if I'm going to go ahead and render it in that format or not. We'll see how the you know how the build progresses but regardless here's the rear hatch. It's just a simple hatch design and on the inside here we have the handle, two locking points. Note they are in these two locations which again is lifted from the real example and we also have a nice little rim found on this section here with the weld beads that are integrally printed on. 
The next bit of equipment to mention is what's actually called the Pagoda. Now, as a quick reference point, I actually made an error when I referred to something as the Pagoda in an earlier video, which was the exhaust, or I should say the blower duct. That was a mistake. In actuality, the Pagoda is this little section here on the rear engine hatch. The rear engine hatch on the V100 is another thing that went through a bit of research and development as the vehicle was you know, went through its production phase. When the hatch was first developed, you had one hatch here that was just a solid steel plate. Then you had another hatch that had some slack grills on it. The slack grill design was present on several of the early production units. However, after the vehicle was again fielded, it was deemed that this was a weak point of the vehicle and was actually susceptible to Molotov cocktails. So what the engineers went ahead and did was they came up with what is known as the Pagoda. What they did was they built up this little box section around the outside portion, and with these four long struts, they actually are provisioned for mounting on a large steel duct. Basically, the duct plugs in place like this, and once it's in place, it allows the air to be freely entering and exiting inside of the engine compartment. However, it makes it much more difficult for enemy fire or shrapnel or any other type of things that you don't want to get inside your engine compartment from entering inside. On the ECA component here, they are fully detailed as one might imagine, which include again the handle, the hinge detailing, the welds, we even have the hatch stops which are right there, and there we have the padlock mount which is right over here, and that is also integrally molded on. We're just going to keep rolling <laughs> on in this, this. That's really all there is to that hatch. This is the hatch where there's a lot more interesting stuff. So on this hatch here, we have the slat grills. Now the grills descend into the engine compartment like the way you see here. And the slats are a specific geometry. They're not just straight flat plates that go from side to side. In fact, they have an interesting shape to them. Hopefully it comes out on camera. But you can see on this one over here what the slat looks like. It's, it has an interesting little curve to it and it's a convex shape on the reverse side. This shape is repeated on all these slats here, and yes, I actually counted every single slat on the real example, and those numbers are replicated here on the ECA counterpart. Just like with everything else, the weld beads are integrally printed on, and the provisions are pre-drilled out here for the mounting of the Pagoda top. As for the Pagoda top, as you can see, single printing, it has its external fastener details integrally molded on, which include both the hex bolt as well as even the washer. On the inside, it has that nice open shape to it. And the reason why I was contemplating on having this as a separate component was because theoretically I could go ahead and 3D print this as one integral unit as you know I've touched upon a few other prints in the past however for this one I decided not to and the reason why is so that you can get this unit properly painted obviously if this thing is buttoned up like this you're not exactly going to be able to get in there with the primer and the paint so with the unit being separate like this this allows the ability to go ahead and get these areas thoroughly primed and painted the unit will just simply drop on in place when the time comes for the installation the next runner contains all of the stuff in order to get these things assembled and fitted to the vehicle. On here you'll see the lock mechanisms, the hinges, and a few other amenities. Now, this is just a pre-production sample. The actual production units are going to have their own dedicated runner just for their own parts because all the components I just mentioned are going to be offered separately on the ECA catalog. So. Starting with the bow hatches again, that takes us to some of the parts that we have here. And note we have this interesting little device, and this is a hatch stop. The way the hatches are designed on the bow is that they have this nice little unit that's integrally hinged into everything. And with the way it works, this actually holds the counter bound spring and it assists the hatch with the opening and closing. On top of that, once the hatch is fully opened up, this prevents it from bottoming out when it's opened all the way. And you'll see exactly how that works once everything is fully assembled, or at least theoretically, if I went ahead and properly designed all the parts. The remaining hinges all have the weld beads integrally printed on. Yeah, which is quite customarily done on my components. And the locks are also designed to be fully functional in that you can pivot them to open or lock the hatch in place. But again, you'll see more of this as the part gets assembled. Hopping back to the vehicle over here, we'll start with the bow hatch area. So the individual who first built this model went ahead and had this model fully 
completed with its functional bow hatches. If you watch part one of the series, you'll see exactly what it looked like when I first got the model. However, his hatches were basically the early production versions where they're just two flat plates, which probably is the reason why he went with them, as it is the easier choice to go with, specifically if you're trying to, you know, fabricate a bunch of these. However, for this one here, obviously that's not going to be the case. I'm going to be going with the later production variants. Early on in the project, I went ahead and removed his hatches. They were just bolted in place with small little brass cabinet hinges, and those are no longer going to be referenced at this point onward, because now we have the new 3D printed ones. So, these ones here are going to be fitted in place, but before I could go ahead and do that, as you can see, I am going to have to make some slight hand fitting to the bow hatch area, just so that these new hatches could fit in place. I will say that the other fellow who designed the model was actually really, really close with the shape that everything needs to be, and it's just going to take just some fine hand tuning in order to get the piece to fit in fuller, or I should say fully. So once the the area here is going to be opened up and the hatches sit nice and flush, it's then going to be time to work on the remaining details as well as also the remaining section that got to be affixed to this area over here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the bow hatch area here revised so that the new hatches can sit flush in place. And to do that, I'm actually going to go ahead and index them on the front lip over here. I'm just going to try to remove more material from the sides and this area, which will then allow the components to fit flush. The reason why I'm indexing the front area is because the dimensions over here are correct, and I don't want to mess with that from this point onward. So I'm going to go ahead and just basically take the two hatches, line them up, and I'm going to rest this lip section over here on the front leaning edge, like so. It appears that the widths are actually nice and at the pro proper height, or width I should say, and it's just the length sections that are going to have to be taken care of. So with your most valuable scratch building aid, i.e. a pencil, let me go ahead and mark these areas. Okay. With the hatches removed, I can see exactly how much material is going to have to be removed in order for the hatches now to fit on nice and flush. To do this, I'm going to, or I should say to do the hand fitting, I'm going to utilize a Dremel with a high speed removal bit, which should definitely make short work of the plastic on these locations. While the bow hatch area is getting reworked and the putties are drying, it's now time to focus on the rear hatch area. And this is going to require a little bit more work compared to the one on the front. Where the one on the front was almost, by and large, the appropriate size, albeit, you know, a little hand fitting here or there. For the one on the back here, it's going to be a little bit more substantial. So, here you can see the hole right here, and as we touched upon in an earlier video, when I secured the rear hatch in place, you see there's a small bit of overhang in this section over here, because I figured that the hatch was made, or the, the original hole was cut slightly too large. Well, now that I have the new hatch in place, or I should say on hand, yeah, you're going to see it's much smaller compared to the original hole that we have here, so there's going to be quite a bit of revision work that's going to be required. For this, I'm going to need to take some measurements because I'm not sure exactly which orientation is this hatch going to be in. Is it going to be closer to the rear? It's definitely not going to be closer to the front. I could already rule that out because this section over here, there's a little bit of a gap between this area and the hatch. So is it all the way in the back here? Or is it slightly in the middle? Also, is it more to the left, more to the right? So I got to go ahead and get that ironed out. However, regardless, I'm still going to have to do the patch up in the same manner. Already I've been going over these sections here with a file just to square off these locations, which is going to make the insertion of the new areas, or I should say the new strips, much more easily done and much more refined. After crunching some numbers, here I was able to readjust the hole to the appropriate size. At this time, the walls have been built up with layers of plastic in order to bring the hole closer in dimensions, and once the glues are fully set and dry, I can then begin the bodywork phase where it's going to be a bunch of sanding with red putty back and forth until everything is polished nice and smooth. While this is going through its motions, let's go ahead and bounce back to the front hatch area because I do have several updates on that front section. And as you can see, the front section's coming along very, very well, and it's furthest along compared to the rear areas. At this point, the two front hatches have been installed on the vehicle, and the front hatches themselves have been partially assembled. The hatches open absolutely 
perfectly and they lock into their appropriate locations as one would imagine. So before I go ahead and mention what needs to be done to this area over here, let me just go over the hinge mechanism and the counterbalance spring system, how it works before the springs get added in place, because it's actually a really cool and pretty slick design that was kind of thought up in an ad hoc manner when they were building and designing these vehicles. So as I mentioned before, the hatches are a second generation hatch, and in addition to the headroom, something else that was requested by the troops in the field upon receiving these vehicles was a way to add a counterbalance spring to assist with the opening and closing of these hatches. Now, this is something that was thought up of really more or less as an afterthought, and the solution was one that was very, very clever. It's done in a way where it does not change at all the hinges that are designed for the system here, and it's basically something that can be a retrofit item and can be installed with relative ease. The retrofit consists of having a longer pin, and also these two units that we have here. If I go ahead and pull the pin out and take the hatch off, you will see exactly how these pieces just clip in place. Here's the hatch. I could literally just reinstall it right now without the mechanisms presently fitted. And this is basically the format that the hatch would have been in when the vehicle was first designed. The way this system works is that it's a sleeve and it fits over the outer section of the hinge work. So again, the hinges are not changed at all. And with the way they are designed, they are impinging on the hatch and also with a spring that is, to be, that is going to be added momentarily. So here you can see what they look like once fitted in place. And obviously the longer hinge pin is going to be required in order to hold the spring which is going to be mounted in this area over here. But with the hinge pin remounted, you can see that the hatch still opens nice and freely. However, it doesn't begin to impinge onto the counterbalance until the hatch hits a certain point. And this is where it would have been a bit difficult to open and close it without the spring. With the camera zoomed out a little bit, I'm going to open up the hatch. And it's going to hit a certain point, and at this point here, it's going to impinge now onto these two units. Now keep in mind, once the unit is fully assembled, there is going to be a spring in here, and this lug here is actually going to intersect one of the spring levers, and that's going to give the resistance required in order to function. But you get an idea how it works without the spring in place. So it's going to open up. The hatch here is going to impinge onto this flat area found on the counterbalance. And when it does, then the entire unit will pivot in unison just like that. Then to close the hatch, you'd simply grab the handle. And right now there's no spring here putting constant pressure up. But when there is, these two sections are going to be pushing up on the bottom portion of the hatch and assisting it with the closure. With the way this works with this bottom section that we have here, these are going to act as stops and they're going to stop the motion of the counterbalance when it makes contact with this side here of the hinge. So what happens is you'll be lifting up on the hatch and it's going to assist it to the midpoint that we have right here. And at this point, the bottom portions are intersecting with the, the hinge. They're going to stop moving. As you can see, they can no longer move. But at this point now, you can close the hatch normally and gravity will do the rest. And the hinges will stay in the upper, I should say the counterbalance will stay in the upright position that we have here. Sounds a bit uh, overly complicated, but it's actually a very simple system. And it's one that the hardest part was actually trying to reverse engineer the unit from studying the pictures of the real one I had access to. But I, you know, after looking at this thing for more time than I really want to disclose, I was able to basically figure out, you know, the secret sauce, so to speak, and get the unit to operate in the exact same manner. So, like I said before, the only thing that is required now is going to be the spring mechanism. Well, the spring is right over here. This is a piece of aluminum rod that was bent to the shape of the spring. These are, by the way, going to, of course, come with the hatches. So, you know, you have everything you need out of the box for the assembly. And to do this, you are going to have to drill a hole into the model itself. This is so that some of the rod can plug into the vehicle. 
and this one here can impinge onto that section. This is going to give a bit of spring tension to the piece and the spring should naturally be able to follow the hatch and work as it does on the real one. Now, this is definitely not spring steel. It's just, you know, aluminum rod. However, with the scale and with the type of function that this is going to be exhibiting, it should work just fine. This is the same type of procedure and same type of design cue that I utilize on the other hatches found on this vehicle that have the counterbalance springs on them. And on those examples, the unit worked actually very, very well. So on here, I'm, I'm not expecting any sort of surprises. As for the hatches themselves, as you can see, they open up absolutely perfectly. And the hatch cut out here was redesigned to, or redefined to the perfect size so that they could open and shut without any sort of inhibiting factors. So the last thing that needs to be done to the hatches, of course, besides the spring is going to be the latches on these sides over here, but those are going to be done after everything is, you know, tested where I could remove the hatch and get everything shot with a coat of primer and, you know, do the interior painting and all that stuff. But more on that is to come. From here, I'm actually just going to go ahead and remove the hinge pins. And I'm going to actually drill a small little hole right here on each side of the hull. That's again, so that the spring can slip inside. As for the prep work on the body, there were some holes found in these sections over here where the original builder had those cabinet hinges in place. Once those were removed, there's now some holes present. These have to be deleted with the bodywork. They were all polished away prior to the installation of the hinges. Right now, there's a little bit of some super glue residue on the surface over here. I'm just going to polish that down with some sandpaper and then I'll be able to continue with the remainder of the build. After a minute or two of getting the holes drilled out and getting everything fitted in place, here's what the hatches look like with the counterbalance spring connected. So, as always, I'm going to open up this hatch here first, and you're going to see exactly how the system operates, like I mentioned before. So you open up to the halfway point, now I'm going to start impinging, and then I push it all the way down. Now note that the spring is actually functioning, and you know what I'm also going to do with this one over here? And the spring is actually doing its springly duty. So here you can see that the spring is doing its job and it's actually keeping the hatch in its open state. If I move the hatch down further, which is actually how it would be in its fully open condition, this counterbalance spring is going to impinge upon it and bring it back to its home state. Now on the real vehicle, there actually is a small little hatch retention clip in this section over here and it's intended to do with exactly what I just mentioned. Keep the hatch in this section clipped in the open position. And but, you know, that's something that's going to be discussed later on. But right now, as you can see, the hatch is actually working very, very well. If I close the hatch, you're going to see the system, again, operate like I mentioned before. So I'm going to start with the closing. Do it from this end so you don't, I don't cover anything up. And then as, as it hits a certain point, it's going to bottom out. And the system here closes, or I should say, yeah, uh, lines and closes in the upright position. as it does on the real vehicle. Same thing with the one on the opposite side. <laughs> I kind of like the way it's springy like that. And remember, this is not a spring steel piece. It's just, uh, you know, thick aluminum floor wire, essentially, that was spooled up into a spring that I've done on the lathe. So I just close it and it, it pinches back in the vertical state. And it works passively. It's not something that you have to manually reset. It works just like the real unit. With the front hatch area basically done, I'm turning my attention, really focusing on the rear section here, which is, of course, going to include this hatch as well as the engine hatch. Engine hatch I'm going to get to back to momentarily, but let's go back here on the rear engine hatch. As I mentioned before, and with those wood frogs chirping along, uh, you can see that I went ahead and filled in the areas that I touched upon before. This was done with layers of... Lexan as well as sheet styrene in order to build everything up to the proper thickness of the original kit plastic. The glues were all set and dry. I went ahead, refined the hole a bit with a Dremel to make it sure that it fits the new hatch perfectly, and then the unit is sliding off into bodywork. And this leads us to why the model is currently sitting outside. The model was taken outdoors because the bodywork that needs to be done to this area here, as one would imagine, is going to be a pretty messy ordeal. So it's best to go ahead and take care of this outdoors. Plus, I also like the nice warm weather that we have now, as well as it's also really cool to listen to wood frogs chirping along. But back to the model here. Uh, we have the red putty that has been applied, sanded 
on several occasions. This is, I think, what, the third layer of red putty that has been applied. Sanding has been done, and right now I believe I'm on my last coat. In addition to the putty, I also went ahead and applied some thick super glue into some areas that had a few little pinholes left over from just the putty sanding procedure. So, at this point here, the sanding is mostly done, but I am going over this panels again with some wet sanding just to make sure everything is as smooth as humanly possible. And that's why I have the camera out at this time, just to show what it looks like at this point. Once the bodywork is concluded, or at least concluded to a point that's satisfactory, I'm going to go ahead, mask everything up, and I'm going to spray paint this area here with some flat black or gray primer, whatever I have on hand, in order to just double check to see exactly what the final outcome of the bodywork is. From here, I can gauge if it needs more work or if I can progress to the next leg of the operation, which is going to be marking and cutting out this section over here. And with all the masking removed, I think the bodywork here is safe to say it's been taken care of. Also, with the way everything was masked, there was absolutely no collateral damage done to the interior portions of the hatches, as well as also to the exhaust compartment. And with the paintwork all complete, you can see just how the top deck has been metamorphosized compared to the way we had it before. So, here we have the hatch. I'm just going to go ahead and drop it in its appropriate location, like so. And it drops right in without any sort of problems. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and bring the model back into the shop where I can go ahead and flesh out the remainder of the hinge and counterbalance spring detailing. And then once that's taken care of, of course, I can turn my attention to the last hatch that needs to be cut out, which is the engine compartment. So let's go ahead and get to that. With the model brought back into the shop, the rear hatch has been added, as well as the remaining details that need to be affixed to the model itself. I'm going to go ahead and bring the camera in closer because I want to point out how the counterbalance spring system works, and it's something that it's best done, again, once the camera is really more or less focused in this area over here. The way the whole system works on the V100's rear hatch is that we have the hatch over here and we have the two hinges. We also have a center guide right here in the middle portion, and this holds the hinge pin in place. Directly behind the hinge setup we have two, these two little blocks and these blocks are there just for the spring to connect into and then with the way the spring is designed you will have a stem that comes out and put constant force on either hinge that we have right here. With the way it works is that when you open up the hatch it's going to compress the spring and then when it comes time to close it, the spring will give you the force required to go ahead and gently bring it down. If I go ahead and open it, you can see exactly how the system works here. Now on the model here, it's actually, the springs are kind of strong and they'll actually close the hatch on you like a mousetrap. However, this is going to be remedied by the next video because there's actually a hatch retention latch that I still have to design. Once that's figured out and mounted to the model, when the hatch is open, it's going to click in place and it's going to hold there, preventing it from closing on you. But as you can see, the hinge works just like the real one in that regard. So you can see how the spring has these dog leg bends in it. This is so that, again, it could put constant pressure on the hinges over here so that when in the open position, it gives you the force required to make the hatch closing a bit easier. This is why I had to use the real springs on this because when I use this spring over here, you would open it up and then when you close it, the metal would stay in this position over here, which would hurt the look of the model. And this is why, again, I had to go with these springs. As for the spring mounts, these ones here are just two pieces of plastic rod that I went ahead and drilled and cut the shape in order to, for this detailing. I originally did design this detailing into the set over here. However, unfortunately, during the course of production, the other unit cracked off and went to Lost Partia. So for continuity reasons, I just went ahead and replaced both of them with the two pieces of plastic. I am going to sculpt some weld, some weld bead detailing in these two sections over here, just so everything blends in appropriately. However, even in this configuration, you can see how the hinge, I should say how the hatch opens and closes very, very efficiently. And the best part is when the hatch is closed, you can see that the little dog legs over here are in their appropriate locations and aren't, you know, sticking up as they wouldn't do on the real unit. So that's so far true to form.
The last thing to mention about the hatch is the small little gutter that we have right around the, the leading edge. This is done in the exact same format with the same materials and with the same techniques that I've already touched upon in a number of these videos. So the part was just bent to shape, glued in its appropriate location, and completing the surface detailing. On this one here, you notice there's a small little gap in this section. That is as per design as I've seen this on the real V100 that I was studying. And this leads us now to the very last bit of the hatch work on this model, or I should say on the model's hull, and that's the rear engine hatch. Unlike the bow hatches and the adjacent rear hatch over here, the previous builder did not cut these sections out. So because of that, it's going to be a bit easier for me to go ahead and cut these out to the appropriate shape. No other bodywork needs to be done, or hopefully if I play my cards right, and I could just simply cut these sections out and then drop the new hatches in their appropriate locations. Now to do that, obviously careful measurements need to be taken. This is one of those things where you want to measure twice and cut once because if the hatch is in the wrong location or if it's askew or if there's any other let me have issues, it's just going to add more work to patch up and to repair. So you really want to use a square and a bunch of other techniques in order to get the everything ironed out. As I mentioned tooling wise, well, you're going to have to use some old school techniques such as a square, a pencil, and a one with a good eraser would help. And then from here, basically I was able to index the hatch appropriately onto the rear area here. I was using pictures of the real one. Also, I got my handy dandy 135th scale model over here to help out. The hatches were then just placed into the appropriate locations and I went ahead and marked them with the pencil. Now when you're marking the, these sections here, you're just going to get the outer leading edge which is very very important. However, you can't just cut the inside area up to the leading edge as that's more or less not going to be something that's going to be beneficial. So I need to go ahead and carefully have an inset for the hatches and to do that I used another quick little technique which was the use here of some plastic stock. The plastic stock is all squared away. It's machine made so it gives you the perfect straight edge without there being any sort of, of alignment issues. And I basically just lined it up here where it meets the leading edge and I was able to draw out the portions here which will give me the center area. I did this to all four locations and this will give you a nice squared off standoff point from the leading edge of the hatch. Now the next thing I want to mention is with the curvature because the hatches are curved they're not just you know a standard 90 degree angle. To add the curvature I'm going to use again the hatch itself. I already took care of this on these two areas over here now I'm going to go ahead and add the curvature over here to show exactly how it's done on camera. So the way this is going to do I'm going to line up this at this square edge over here with this flat section and this flat section here of the hatch. And because this hatch here is nice and flat, it's very advantageous on doing this procedure with. So I'm just going to line this up as such. And now I'm just going to take the pencil and just draw it. Just like so. As you can see, it has the perfect curvature drawn out, which will really come in handy when it comes time for the, the, the Dremel. As for this one here, I'm going to do it again right here on camera. And there we have it. So now that I have the parameters laid out, all of this here can be amputated. And then once this area is removed and sanded and flushed, or I should say squared away, then I can go ahead and start with the hatch mounting procedure. To do the actual plastic cutting, I'm going to utilize the Multimaster. As again, this will give you a very nice, clean, straight cut. And it's going to be used to plunge cut these four areas over here. For the remaining curved section, this is going to be tackled with the Dremel with a couple of different bits. But from here, I'm going to go ahead and start with the major cutout work. The Multimaster did a great job with cutting out the straightaway sections. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut out the four corners, which will cause this plate here to plunk into the inside of the vehicle. In order to do this, it's going to be done with the Dremel, and I have here a very small router bit. And the size is, uh, well, it's not here on the cover, is it on the box? It's a 1.25 millimeter router bit purchased from the vendor Drill Bits Unlimited, which is, these are the fellows I always recommend in all of my videos. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and begin with the cutting. And you can see again how much short work this does with this material.
Okay, so the areas are fully cut, but a lot of times when you're cutting through plastic like that, the plastic melts and it kind of like rewelds itself to itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go again with the multi-master, which should remove more material and, or I should say remove the welds and then the piece should just fall directly into the vehicle. And presto, the inner material has been amputated. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna refine the edge a little bit. This is gonna be done with a file for the straightaway sections. And for the curved sections, I'm gonna use a Dremel with a high speed removal bit. And I can carefully just chisel away at the sections, refining everything further. But there's no point getting that on camera. Let's go ahead and cut across where that has already been accomplished. One thing I did wanna to touch upon was I went ahead and cut the hole out and it's actually been refined in this point over here. However, when it came time to test fit the hatch, specifically the one with the descending grill work, it's just slightly too short. So I went ahead and marked the material out that needs to be removed. In order to help me do this freehand with the Dremel, I'm going to go ahead and, or I should say I already did, mark the areas with some masking tape. Now the masking tape I use is the wide section, so I don't need to waste any more tape than I need to. So I went ahead and just ripped it in half and I'm using the straight edge here as this is the most important part as my guide. This should give me a perfect visual cue when to stop with the removal of the material with the Dremel, just to make sure everything is as square as possible. Now, some people are wondering, well, John, why can't you use the Multimaster for this? And in my opinion, the Multimaster is just not enough material for the thing to get enough meat on. So it's best to do this with the Dremel. You can use a file also, by the way, in case you do not have the steady hand to do this procedure with a rotary tool. But it, you know, from in my circumstances here, I don't want to be here all day. And I think I have the, the muscle strength in order to go ahead and do the procedure freehand. And after not a whole lot of work, here's what the rear hatch system looks like once fitted in place. At this point here, the two hatches have been fitted, as are the external latches. And the hinges have also been permanently attached to the hull. I can actually open everything up and lock it up as it would be on the real vehicle. The latches that you see right now are not currently glued in just yet. I want to go ahead and thoroughly prime the boss and the latches themselves just prior to the installation of these parts to thoroughly ensure that the components are fully painted. When it comes to components like this, if you paint them once everything is fully painted, what will eventually happen is that when you rotate the latch out of the way, you're going to have exposed area of material underneath, and this is something that can hurt the look of the build. So it's one of those things where I'm just going to go ahead at the earliest opportunity, thoroughly prime everything, and then I'll be able to fit them to the vehicle. However, here you get a good idea on how everything is actually functional. So, oh, by the way, in addition to the hatches, you can also see the gutter system has been added as well with the same techniques that I touched upon earlier. So back to the hatch. One thing that's interesting about the engine hatch is that this is the only portion of this vehicle where the latches are on the outside of the vehicle. Everything else, the latches are accessed only from the inside, including even the side engine hatch that we have right Right here that's slightly out of frame in the camera. In order to open up the hatch or get access to the entry compartment on a V100, you first hit these two latches on either side. This will allow these two doors here to swing open. And then from here, you go ahead on the inside and swing the latch. And then this door here can fully open up. As you can see, even though this engine hatch here can be opened from the exterior, it can only be secured from the inside portion as there's no external fittings whatsoever in order to actuate the latch. Then when it comes time to seal the vehicle back up, you just simply close it, swing the little latch, close the version with the pagoda first as if you notice the way everything is designed, it all self locks into each other where you only need one set of latches because this hatch here is kept in place with this latch and once you go or, or with this hatch and then once you secure the two securing latches in place, this here will prevent the other one from opening up because of that recessed slip that it has on the bottom. With the hatches fitted in place and with the hinge work all out of the way, the next thing I'm going to do is going to take all of the hatches, this includes the ones on the rear and the ones in the front, off of their hinges and this will allow me to thoroughly pre-prime and paint the interior sections. Once those sections are all painted and squared away, these units here will be remounted to the model and at that point there the hatch work is basically concluded. 
The remaining detailing needs to be added to this section of the model, which will include several antenna base mounts. There are these tubular mounts found on the rear section. I believe there's three in total, if I'm not mistaken. And these are bits of equipment that I'm currently developing, and once they are developed, they'll enter into production, and once in hand, obviously they will be fitted to the rear of the model. Once those are fitted in place, that more or less wraps up this area here of the build completely. There is one other little bit of detailing, it's a very minute bit of detailing, and that's going to be added to this area here, just slightly next to this hatch. As for what that is, I'll be going over that in more depth in the next video update. In addition to that, there are also some hatch stops which need to be added to these two locations, and this is again something I'm going to cover in more depth in the next update video. And needless to say, even though the top deck still has one or two small items that need to be fleshed out, the model is really taking a nice leap forward to its final end goal. The hatches were basically the last of the major components required in order to finish the hull, and with these components fitted in place, you can really see the model is basically at its teetering point, and it's mostly going to be a roller coaster ride downhill from this point onward. However, more information on all that is going to be discussed in the next video update. And with that, that wraps up this project update video for this 1 6 scale scratch built Cadillac Gage XM706 armored car. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to this channel where it's a great way to keep up to date on new posted content being 1 6 scale project update videos like this one over here or the other smaller scale model showcase videos that frequently get posted to this channel. Another way to keep a loop of new posted content is by liking us on Facebook. There, I have more photographs of this particular build that have been posted since the project start, as well as the other smaller and larger scale builds that have been seen on this channel in the past. Furthermore, don't forget to swing by EastCoastArmory.com for more 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds and detail components. Thanks again, I'll be seeing you all again on the next one. Take care.